Well, first of all, it is a crazy idea, but it's an innovative idea. One of the things that attracted me to come to Kraft Heinz was when, at that time when, when I was joining, there was this tremendous ambition to lead the future of food, right? Lead the future of food. And the, the remix machine is a good example where Kraft Heinz is really leaning forward into spaces that may not have been leaned into uh, in the past, but we're leaning into, for, leaning into them forward. We, and we're asking the question, what is the most impactful thing we could do for the consumer? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Spoon Podcast. My name is Michael Wolf, and on today's show, I sit down with Robert Scott, the president of R&D for North America for Kraft Heinz, a company that which I, like many of you listening to the podcast, have had their products in my life pretty much since I was a little kid in my cupboard and in my fridge, growing up eating Oscar Mayer hot dogs, and my brother and I would like cut big giant slices of Velveeta cheese and eat them. Don't judge me. Uh, we've had Jello, Philly cream cheese, Heinz ketchup, mustard, all these different products. This is a product that is weaved into the fabric of Americans' lives. And the company, which is a result of the merger between Kraft Foods and Heinz, two long-established food companies that have been around for over a century, uh, it's a result of the merger between these two companies in 2015. And since that time, they are now the third biggest food brand in North America. And I always think it's interesting to check in with these bigger food brands, these bigger food companies, to hear about how they are thinking about innovation and reinventing their product lineup. I mean, it's always kind of trendy in food tech to dismiss these bigger and long-established food brands. But the reality is these companies still account for just a huge amount of the share of what people buy when they go to grocery stores. And the reality is they're not sitting still. One of the ways I think Kraft Heinz is reinventing itself and has been over the past couple of years is through a joint venture with Notco, a company that has made a name for itself by creating new forms of plant-based milks and meats using AI, an AI called Giuseppe. And so I thought it'd be interesting to talk to Robert about this and how he is thinking about using AI more broadly as it applies to the company's portfolio. I also talked with Robert about some of the more quirky products the company has introduced in the last couple of years, one of which is the Heinz Remix. It's this crazy sounding vending machine that essentially allows you to mix and match and create your own custom condiment when you're in a fast food restaurant, a quick service restaurant. So if you want mayo, buffalo, mayonnaise, you can actually do that using the Kraft Remix. We also talked about the 360 Crisp, which is a product that essentially is made for microwaves. And it actually allows a product that is cooked to come out as if it was pan crisped. And so I wanted to talk to him about that as well. It was a good conversation. I hope you enjoy it. We will be talking about some of the ideas around AI and integrating AI into product development cycles for big food companies at our Food AI Summit, which will be in Berkeley on September 25th. You can find out more about that at foodsummit.ai. If you want to go, you can use the discount code podcast for 15% off tickets. All right, that's it for now. Let's get to my conversation with Robert Scott. All right. I am here with Kraft Heinz, president of R&D North America, Robert Scott. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, Robert? I'm good, Michael. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to talk to you because Kraft Heinz is obviously a brand I grew up with as, along with many Americans. Um, you guys have been serving food in, in my house and uh, millions of other houses. So love to always hear what big food brands like yourself are doing. And you're kind of at the center of it. You're heading up all this R&D. Yeah. You're not what's next. How would you explain your job to people? Well, well, it's the best job in the world, first of all, right? To to have an opportunity to innovate and create the future of food. Um, I also grew up in an age where some of the most iconic brands that we have with Kraft Heinz today were at the center of my table, the center of conversation, even the center of my brother and I sitting on the edge of a real fishing pond, singing the Oscar Mayer Wiener song with a fishing pole <laughs> in my hand like the little kid. So to get a an opportunity to work at an iconic company like this with iconic brands is absolutely a dream come true. So I get to innovate, right? My job is to create the future. And it's this intersection of food and technology. How did you come into this career? Like, were you someone who like studied food science in college or how did this happen? My career has been a, a bit of a winding path. 
but it was always anchored in science. So I have a PhD in oh, wow. cell and you know, cell biology. Um, so my angle into the food world didn't start out into the food world. I started out as a college professor for a while. I ended up going to work for uh, Procter & Gamble for a bit where they brought me in to look at uh, health and wellness. So we looked at like uh, weight management technology and, and respiratory care. I ended up going to Coca-Cola for a while where I actually focused on health and wellness and grew up in R&D there. Here at Kraft Heinz, it's always been about the science of the food. That was always my angle. So I didn't grow up as a food scientist. So I was a biologist by training. So mm -hmm. what's attractive about the role I'm in now is we're actually looking at how technology and science can drive consumer behavior, can drive the food opportunities, and really drive the future. And part of that future is going to be new alternatives, more plant-forward alternatives. And I think you guys are definitely seeing that. If, if what I've seen from you for the past couple of years is in the evidence, one of the big indications of that is the NOTCO partnership. Yeah. And you're, you're helping oversee a lot of that in terms of the, the R and D and what's, can you talk a little bit about that and how yeah. you're working with NOTCO in terms of developing new alternatives? Yeah. I, and, and before I go directly into the NOTCO, I think the fundamental uh, belief that I try to organize innovation around is consumer choice. So even with the NOTCO example, when you look at consumers and how consumers are, are changing their diets and how they're choosing to, to, to eat every day, there is a growing population of consumers who have a desire to have more plant-based, plant-forward food options for protein sourcing. So the NOTCO joint venture that we have was a great synergy between a company who is really leveraging next generation AI to predict great tasting formulas, and a company like Kraft Heinz who knows how to scale opportunities. So you bring a great innovative company with the power of scale and manufacturing at a Kraft Heinz have, and you create this you know, amazing synergy. You no, know, with the not cool example, uh, clearly we have accelerated our entry into the plant-based space over the span of not quite two years yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've introduced you know, products into the market faster than I would have ever thought we could have done in isolation. And I think when I look at what we're seeing around AI accelerate food development, it is ex having an, an acceleration effect. We're yes. being able to just crunch down those development windows. And so if you looked at like bringing a new product to market in old Kraft Heinz, if saying it's not even yeah. plant-based, what would that window com be compared to like, nowadays we're using these newer tools to accelerate the product development. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to give a, a solid number to that, but I can tell you the areas that are getting faster, right? And then we can extrapolate numbers. For example, we're getting faster with understanding what are the options in a formulation. So if I could have AI help reduce the, the, the formula upfront creativity by 80%, because you would say, AI, I'm looking for you know, these factors, these parameters, these ingredients limited to this cost, and they come back with a list of here, try these 10 things. Even if, you know, all 10 don't work initially, you've narrowed your discovery list down. So the upfront discovery part has gotten much shorter. Uh, shorter. I think the other part that uh, the promise of AI is how do we start predicting a little bit more around our, the consumer liking how do we start predicting a little bit more around the shelf life? A lot of things that we do very manually today. We take products and we put it in front of the consumer and we ask them yeah, a series of yeah. questions. We bring it back. We take it and we reformulate. We take it back and ask them again. So could AI help us become more predictive with consumers? And the same with shelf life. Sometimes people are amazed that in a food company, if I tell you a product has a a 180 day shelf life, guess what? I have to make that product and put it on a shelf for 180 days before we're able to put it into the market and guarantee a shelf life. So those things take a lot of time. AI can absolutely help reduce that. One of the things I said in my talks is that AI will just become a integral table stakes part of the development process for so many products across, going beyond food, across yep. so many verticals. How do you think, is this something that's becoming like an internal muscle now that you're working with NOTCO, 
you're seeing how they work and you're kind of developing your own processes processes do you see ai becoming an internal muscle for craft Heinz and that will be weaved across different yeah. parts of product development beyond this that, relationship that, absolutely. absolutely and just not product development right so i see ai 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 is here to stay right and ai is is a bit of how i view a co-pilot to how we work within craft Heinz. so we is we, we, we're leveraging AI and how we look at our supply chain, right? How do we make sure that what we manufacture, how we operate? So AI is already playing a role with this. As it relates to NOTCO and formulation, we're emerging into that space a little bit more, right? We're really trying to figure out how AI can continue to accelerate and play that role as a co-pilot. But it's here to stay. We're embracing it. We see it, we see it as an integral part of our growth algorithm, and we're excited about it. And we're looking at every space that AI can be used to accelerate knowledge. Another piece that I think is critical for AI, the, talking about formulation is already always very exciting, but the base knowledge capture, basic knowledge exchange, basic knowledge, how do you get a new uh, uh, talent pool up to speed quickly without having to wait for 25, 30 years of experience? That's where I see AI playing mm. tremendous dividends. So we're, we're extremely excited about it. So augmentation of knowledge is one of the key ways you do it. I, I think Matson just announced last week, they uh, hired, or they basically, their, their chairman became the chief AI officer. They're kind of a food consultancy, but I know them. Yeah. Do you, I mean, does, can you see Kraft Heinz hiring a chief AI, AI officer? Like, how does it change in terms of like, do you have AI scientists you're bringing in? Or is this something yeah. you're, you're going to do partnerships like with NOTCO? It's, it's going to be a combination. So we absolutely have a very strong internal AI uh, or digital organization that focuses on AI. Um, within a, a core R&D organization like I have, you can imagine that the capability, historical capability of R&D weren't very heavy in AI, right? So we are working with the digital team. Um, I, I can call the guy a chief AI officer. I don't think that's his title, yeah. but I think he, he is leading everything AI for the company and we're investing in it. Uh, just last week, I had a tremendously uh, powerful conversation with that AI digital team as we looked across multiple buckets of work that we're expecting AI to help us with throughout the entire product development process from ideation all the way to commercial launch. And everywhere in between, we're looking at how AI can help. Well, there's lots of other things you're working on. And one of the funner ones I want to talk about is the remix, which yeah. I think you guys introduced, I think, in the National Restaurant Show last about a year ago. Yes. And it's, I'm like, it was kind of out, out of left field to me, but in a good way. Like, I'm like, what? This is not something I expected from Kraft Heinz. I, I would describe it as a, a Coca-Cola. Uh, it's like the freestyle for condiments. Yeah. And then you guys do something like 200 combinations of condiments. You have these enhancers. Where did this crazy idea come from? <laughs> well, first of all, it is a crazy idea, um, but it's an innovative idea. One of the things that yeah, attracted yeah. me to come to Kraft Times was when, at that time when, when I was joining, there was this tremendous ambition to lead the future of food, right? Lead the future of food. And the, the remix machine is a good example where Kraft Times is really leaning forward into spaces that may not have been leaned into uh, in the past, but we're leaning into for leaning into them for it, we, and we're asking the question: What is the most impactful thing we could do for the consumer? I mean, I think I started this conversation by saying, "Consumer and choice is my sort of grounding uh, spot yeah. for everything I do." And the remix machine is basically asking a simple question: What could you give consumers? What what opportunity could you give consumers to be as creative as they wanted to be with their sauces? We all love great tasting sauces. Uh, we all have our favorites. We all have our specialty mixes that we make at home. How do you take that and bring it into a setting where it makes it easy for them? And I love the remix machine. I think even from a business perspective, now imagine all those various combinations that the consumers are, are, are doing with remix. And now that becomes input. As I think about my retail business, is there a strange combination that everyone continues to seem to do that could unlock a retail opportunity that perhaps we wouldn't think about on our own. All right. Exa getting the next Mayo chip chop, or for example, right. Figuring out what that next weird combination is also maybe trialing new flavors. Like yeah. your flavor scouts are probably out there saying, Hey, there's uh there's cinnamon, whatever. And just make this up. Like Absolutely. cinnamon is like an accent that we want in, in condiments. Maybe you try that out. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll tell you a, a perfect example of a of a kind of recent condiment that we launched that you know, it, it is more impactful than I probably imagined when we first started development. And that is our pickle ketchup. I don't know if you haven't if you've tried a pickle ketchup. No, right, no but I want to try it. I want right. to try it now. All right. I, this is what I tell people. And I took the board. I, I was fortunate enough to take our board through. We have an R&D facility in, in Warrendale, Pittsburgh, where Legacy Heinz uh, 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 was. I took the board through the, the facility, and I let them experience the pickle ketchup before we put it to market. And almost to a person, they said the same thing that I say. I never knew I needed pickle ketchup in my life yeah, yeah. until I tasted pickle ketchup. So if you haven't gotten <laughs> You're going to say the same thing. Send me a note back and say, Robert, you're right. I never yeah. knew I needed pickle ketchup in my life. I think I immediately, I think I need it. So I, I'm not, I'm maybe the outlier, but so um, is this something we can envision at uh, like every fast food place? I mean, I, I like the idea also like of like less waste. I think dispensing yeah. on site is like less yeah. wasteful. So yeah. what's the vision for something like the remixes? Do you see it widely distributed? Yeah, in, in 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 a perfect scenario, absolutely. We, we are most successful as a company when we scale, right? Again, go back to the not co partnership. The reason the partnership works so well is because you have a great technology creator and a company that understands how to scale things. So, same is true with Remix. We're going to be most successful when we scale it, and we're looking to scale it across a variety of of uh, venues. Absolutely. And for the the people who are just listening to the podcast, it is visually it looks like a a vending machine, right? It looks uh, so. You're, it's a condiment vending machine. I think there's a touch screen. You're saying, "Oh, I want buffalo flavored, yeah. mango flavored ketchup," and then you plug it in and, it's, and it puts it out in a little receptacle, right? Yeah. So if uh, if those who are of of my generation remember the Jetsons, yep. remember the, the the interesting food dispensers that were in the Jetsons where they would punch yep. in something and give them the drop down and they'll mix the food. So put that in mind when you see the remix. It's an amazing work of technology. The the intricacies to deliver that it's going to it's very attractive on the outside. It looks great. It's fun to do, but the technology work that goes into making that is not trivial at all. I was thinking only in the context of single serve at like a McDonald's or Burger King, but what about in a grocery store? If I, I love Buffalo uh, pickle flavored ketchup and I want to take home my own bottle of it, like, is that like something you guys have explored or is that like not on the drawing board? Are, are, are you, are you uh, giving me your application for being creative? Right. So I yeah, think <laughs> I, I want to fly. <laughs> I, I, I think that whether the remix machine shows up in a, in a venue like that or not, the outputs. Remember I said that part of yep. the ambition is if there is a unique flavor, it seems like it's going to bubble. And if we can take that insight and create retail opportunities out of it, I think we're going to win. Another interesting product. I didn't even know about this until just recently was the 360 crisp. Yeah. And what's interesting to me about that is um, I oftentimes don't find it's funny. I've talked to like a major appliance brand very recently an executive from a major appliance brand they go i haven't they said i haven't talked to a food company in years which shocked me because they're making the cooking devices for the food and i always thought there'd be much more conversation between cpg brands and appliance brands i think there should yeah. be more what's interesting to me about the 360 crisp is you guys are thinking about how something is actually cooked in an appliance and bringing about a different result you could probably do a better job explaining 360 crisp but what is that explain that to people yeah, yeah so so Good question. The 360 Crisp is is a technology that allows you one of the detractors. Again, think about the consumer. One of the detractors of the consumer with the microwave experience is if I put a sandwich in a microwave, it typically ends up very tough. The bread gets toughed on. You don't have a really yeah. good experience. And what the 360 Crisp technology allows us to do is to make a good tasting grilled cheese sandwich in this application, a grilled cheese sandwich, put it in a microwave for an appropriate amount of time. And when you take the, the product out of the microwave, you're tasting and experiencing it as if you had just made the grilled cheese sandwich on your cooktop. The crispiness of the bread, nice the buttery notes. So this provides convenience. Again, talk to the consumers. The consumers will tell you what they want you to innovate in. So the convenience of it, the experience of it, the crispiness, you're not making trade-offs on what a grilled cheese sandwich should taste like. 
right? But you have the convenience of being able to store it in your freezer for a while. The the ease of you know you stick it in the microwave very quickly. Imagine someone coming home and they only have a few seconds. They grab it, they throw it in the microwave, they hit the button, and they get the experience as if they stood in front of the cooktop making the grilled cheese sandwich. Super walk exciting. Me, walk me through arriving at a product like this crisp 360, 360 crisp. Like you you're doing consumer research. Yeah. You're you're in a kitchen now. Maybe that's part of your test kitchen. Oh, this is scenario, actually, like, yeah, it's a great test kitchen. It's one of the four test kitchens that are around me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like how does this work? How do you, how do you th- ideate and conceive of a product like this? Like wh- what's the process? Is it research, et cetera? And then how do you kind of like get in the white lab coats and product develop something like this? Yeah. So it, with an example like this, it, it does really start with consumer insight, but it's just not okay. consumer insight. The consumer are the people who are consuming in the shoppers, but the customer insight, what are they, when we talk to the customers and the stores, what are the areas that are emerging and growing? And when they look at their customer base, we look at the consumers. Then we start looking at what technology gaps out there. If you look at what the consumers are sharing, sharing with you, they will help you understand where the gaps are. And then you try to find, you got a business, you got a consumer insight, now you need a technology. And the reason many micro, many frozen meals that you put in the microwave are so bad today yeah. it's because the technology unlock hasn't been executed like we're doing with uh, 360. So 360, the unlock is the technology. The, the consumer gap was always been there. The business need was always there. We just found the right technology. And the technology is part about engineering and packaging. The technology is part around the right ingredient the right sourcing of the ingredient. So the technology is really what's driving that breakthrough. Thinking about like 10 years in the future, are you guys trying to envision what maybe the consumer kitchen looks like? I mean, I could imagine we we, don't, we have limited counter space, but like you're, you're essentially your remix for the countertop. That could be yeah. interesting. Like imagine like, hey, an automated flavor dispenser. There was a startup called Canna that was doing like one cartridge and doing like a bunch of different drinks. Yeah. Could we maybe imagine a feature where we get a cartridge and just does like, a hundred flavors of condiments. I think in, in imagining the future is endless, right? I, I've had the experience in, in previous roles um, to to do some of the reimagining you just talked about, and I think if you can bring choice to the consumer home, similar to what the experience they may get in a in a restaurant at the right price, I think it's amazing. But from a business perspective, you got to have all the pieces of the mm, equation together. Yeah. Part of what you, the example you gave, perhaps didn't work because of looking at all of the pieces of the puzzle that need to connect uh, for it to be a, a proposition that can work in, inside of a consumer home. So, yeah, absolutely. I think the other piece that we're doing when we look at packaging across our entire mm. business, how do you make the packaging work inside the refrigerator even better? So the technology that we're exploring as a Kraft Heinz company is really mm. part of in reimagining the future of food. When we use that as a sort of a, of a, a rallying cry, it's just not language. For us, we truly are reimagining the future of food and what we need to do as a big branded company to play a part of that. Um, our scale is important, but scale is even better if you're scaling innovation. So, yeah, absolutely, we're doing it. You're obviously looking at the food consumable itself, but a big part of consumable food, CPG, is packaging. Is that part of what you're looking at and how you can reduce uh, sus- like the environmental f- footprint, yeah. the increased sustain- sustainability? Is that something you're thinking about and, and doing R&D around? Yeah, a- absolutely. And, and we have you know, a, a, a huge team, a part of my organization is a big team who focuses every day on our packaging focus every day on how do we have create more reusable, recyclable content in our pack. In fact, we just, we launched a Mayo and Miracle Whip and a 100% recyclable PET. So we, we're doing the work. Um, but with that, we also have a big team who's helping us think about our, our sort of net zero ambition and the mm-hmm. work we're doing around sustainability. So it's, it is top of mind for the organization. We know that we have a huge ambition to grow. We're going to grow as a company, but part of growing is also making sure that the footprint we leave as we grow is minimized. 
a big part of every conversation I've had lately with food brands is this uh, big thing that's been in the news, GLP-1 drugs like Gozempic. What, what is your thinking around that? And ultimately, you know, when you're thinking about that, what does it mean for, for Kraft Heinz? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. I, I started my corporate career working for a company where I was doing a lot of work on, on ingredient technologies to, to try to impact satiety and weight management. And GLP-1 is an interesting drug where it has the sort of medical uh, indication around managing diabetes. And then you have you know, people taking it for, for weight. And I think for a company like, like Kraft Heinz, it's important for us to really understand where the consumer is and what the consumer is asking for and looking for. And our job, my job, is to make sure that the company has 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 ingredients, has products that can help support any lifestyle that a consumer is choosing. So if you have someone who is who is taking GLP-1 to manage their blood uh, sugar levels or if they're taking it to, to manage their weight, I want to always have a product in the store that someone can go to as a low sugar option or someone can go to as a low calorie option. So for me, GLP-1 and, and that uh, technology just helps me understand the consumer and where the consumer is going a little bit better. And it helps help shape and inform some of the directions that, that I want to go in in terms of creating product and uh, choice for the consumer in the marketplace. And we're doing that. We're doing that. In fact, our, our product portfolio is already full of low calorie initiatives. It's already full of, of, of reduced sugar options. So if someone's doing that for GLP-1, we absolutely have products that can help support that diet and lifestyle. All right. So Robert, you are heading up R&D for one of the biggest food companies in North America. If someone's looking at your job, say, hey, I ultimately want to have that career path. <laughs> what would what advice would you give them right now, a young person in college or just out of college? Oh, good question. What would I... Be careful what you ask for. That would be the first thing <laughs> I, I tell them. And then I would say, be curious, right? My, my, my job is an organized curiosity. That's what my job is. Um, always seek to, to, to go into areas where the path is less defined. I think success in the marketplace, especially with a big company like this, is not going to be me choose and follows. It's going to be creating the future. So I think a young person who wants my job, they can major in a variety of things. They can major in the sciences. They can major in you know, engineering. Um, but I would basically tell them, always, always, always ask the question. Be curious. And that's the fundamentals of my job. That's great advice. Yeah. All right, Robert Scott, Kraft Heinz, president of R&D for North America. Really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for giving us a little peek into your world and what a big company like Kraft Heinz is doing for the future. Absolutely. My pleasure, Michael. Thanks for having me. All right. That's it. That's my conversation with Robert Scott from Kraft Heinz. I hope you enjoyed it. I always learn a lot hearing from these folks who are steering the bigger companies into the future and what they're doing, how they're doing it internally, how they're working with external partners. It's always an interesting conversation. If you are one of those people who have tried the remix out in the wild, I would love to hear about your experience. If you've made one of those crazy condiment creations, tell us what you made. Drop us a note, go to the spoon and contact us. So, all right, that's it for today. We will be talking to you soon. Have a great weekend.